Hi, I'm Dave Zarin, and this is your Prince George's County Public Schools update. We're here today to look at some of the exciting stories in the Prince George's County Public Schools, starting with a trip to Camp Schmidt, the 40-year-old environmental education center where generations of children have been experiencing the out of doors like never before. Here's Grant Kittleson with the story. Learning can happen in different ways and in different places. Nowhere is that more evident than at Camp Schmidt, where students from Prince George's County arrive for an overnight stay complete with bunk beds. Superintendent of Schools Dr. William Height examined the accommodations for a group from Columbia Park on their arrival. To think that we have 400 acres where students can move from water ecology to problem solving to leadership and all of those activities exist in one place and where, oh by the way, students spend the night, they are in the environment in a natural habitat. It, it is just phenomenal what students are exposed to here at Camp Schmidt. It may have been the first time for many of these students at Camp Schmidt, but it certainly wasn't the first for Lamont Gore. He attended Camp Schmidt when he was a student in Prince George's County Public Schools and he has returned multiple times as a chaperone for his children. I missed out one opportunity with one of my kids because my leg was broke, but uh, I think it's very important that as a kid or a student or an adult chaperoning your own kids that they learn about the environment. The lessons that Lamont learned at Camp Schmidt are still holding strong today. Coming here, not that I was a, a litter, but I tend to try to make sure I throw everything in the trash and recycle you know, not try to pollute the air. You know, you learn that when you come here and it's a good experience. So I like coming here and, and if I had another child, I'll come again. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. You know, the children at Camp Schmidt got to actually live life in the wild. But the students at Suitland High School could only imagine taking a ride on the wild side. That's because a drag racer showed up at their school with his souped up car and his pride of accomplishment. Why a race car driver was standing on the stage of Suitland High School soon became clear as Derek Towns reflected on beginning his improbable journey to the track in the very same way as the students who sat before him. But I was a young student just like them and uh, I started my own business basically because I always wanted to have a race car some kind of way and uh, to get a race car I needed money. My daddy's name isn't Earnhardt or uh, Bernstein or anything like that, so I had to go and uh, work and get a job. As a young electrician in a Philadelphia vocational tech program like Suitland's, who now owns his own electrical company, Derek has parlayed his entrepreneurial skills and passion for fast cars into a budding career that few African Americans have tried. And although his 1968 Camaro with its supercharged, blown alcohol, 2,500 horsepower engine has reached 232 miles per hour in the quarter mile in just 6.2 seconds, the struggle to actually make it to the starting line wasn't nearly as speedy or without its setbacks. It's just constant, uh, a constant struggle and a constant focus on the goal to uh, get out there and do like I'm doing. I'm going racing and racing, and now I'd like to turn it around and start really winning. And while Derek was hoping to win over students with his life story and magnificent green machine, on the practical side, he just wants to win. Show him that checkered flag and the money. That Derek Towns credits his success to his high school vocational program is one of the many reasons that we celebrate American Education Week each year. Here again is Grant Kittleson to tell us about some of the proclamations issued this year to honor Prince George's County during American Education Week. When the White House recognizes your accomplishments, then you must be doing something right. That's the case for Prince George's Community College, which received a proclamation from the County Council for being one of the champions of change by the White House. Dr. Charlene Dukes accepted the proclamation at a recent council meeting. The recognition from the White House came as a result of the college's commitment to improving completion rates, especially among disadvantaged students and for their sector-based partnerships. That wasn't the only proclamation by the council involving our schools. They also recognized PGCPS for their efforts in conjunction with the nationwide 90th Annual American Education Week. The purpose of the week is to raise awareness of the importance of providing every child in America with a quality public education.
Board of Education member Donna Hathaway Beck and student board member Faith Jackson were on hand to accept the proclamation. Thanks, Grant. And finally, in this season of gratitude, the students at Laurel High School recently honored their teachers and local citizens who served in the armed forces with a Veterans Day ceremony that was both poignant and proud. The singing of the national anthem had particular significance at Laurel High School recently as the school welcomed past and present members of the armed forces to celebrate Veterans Day. With a backdrop of a specially made flag whose stars were all inscribed with the names of Laurel area vets, the school recognized those who'd served our country with a gift of a boxed flag, wild cheers, and much gratitude. But the highlight of the morning was the conversations between the veterans themselves and the students. Stories that touched on the sacrifice, danger, and yes, benefits that are all part of military service. He actually showed me some things that I wanted to do. Go trying to see the world, go see what it was all about, and just trying to get some different experiences and uh, made me a better person. That's the way I look at it. What is it you're trying to tell them about your military service? Uh, it was a good experience. Other than being over there, but you learn from it and you go from there. It's a good thing for education, pay for your schooling later on, things like that. I didn't, I didn't use enough of it, but I did some of it after I got out. Sergeant Valiant Ruttero, who went to Vietnam in 1967 at the age of 19, shared with students his pictures of the time, including bridges he'd built that were often blown up by the Viet Cong, and shots of villages, places where trust was often missing. It looks like a tough experience to do and to go through, but in the, in the long run, it's a very good way, of course, to get money for your college education. And you learn stuff about yourself and you learn stuff about you know, your whole aspect on life and how it'll change, like, it'll just change your idea. Do you think you might want to sign up for military service? Yes, because I really want to, like, join the military because my uncle did and it was just, like, a good experience for me to, like, join. I can see myself doing that. Whether they end up serving or not, the patriotic fervor of Laurel's Veterans Day was a perfect lesson in the responsibilities of living in a free country. And we think that in honor of Veterans Day, it's no better way to acknowledge and recognize the service to our country from the servicemen and women who have served past and present. Um, and so we want our students to understand what that means what it means to serve, but what it means more importantly to serve this great country uh, in which we live. Thanks to all the veterans and the organizers of the Veterans Day event for giving one generation a chance to applaud the services of another that went before and helped keep us free. That's it for this edition of Update. For Grant Kittleson, I'm Dave Zarin. We'll see you next time with more good news from the Prince George's County Public Schools.